It's Hop Along Cassidy. With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hopalong Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And now, another exciting story of the early West. The mystery at Three Oaks. It was a time when Three Oaks was a busy little town. That was when the White Lady Gold Mine was pouring out its wealth to those who bent their backs and took it from the bosom of Mother Earth. But the mine simmered out and the town went back to normal. The only business that flourished was the Black Deuce Bar and Dance Hall run by Hank Butler. A stranger has just entered the Black Deuce asking for Butler. Luke said you wanted to talk to me, stranger. Your name Hank Butler? That's right. State your business. Well, I guess you're the man I want. I'm Jim Acorn of the Tyrell Investment and Mining Corporation in Denver. I'm here to offer you a fair price for your stock in the White Lady Gold Mine. White Lady Gold Mine? That mine ain't been worked for ten years. I'm not here to discuss that, my friend. I'm here to make you a bona fide offer of 50 cents a share for your 5,000 shares. Ah. Eh... You bought any others? I'm buying 5,000 from Curly Waters, buying 10,000 shares from a fellow named Clem Higby, 5,000 from Hopalong Cassidy. Hopalong Cassidy, eh? Uh, He don't live around here. I'm meeting him at the hotel this evening. He's riding in. Mm. Uh, 50 cents a share, eh? That's right. And I'm only making one offer. You know, fella, I'll be mighty glad to get anything from that stock, but, uh... Hey, what you so nervous about? Me? Nervous? How, how, how do you mean? Keep twisting your fingers like you're twirling a mustache. And you ain't got one. <laughs> Force a habit, friend. I had one for 15 years. I just, uh, just shaved it off today. Uh, I guess you can't be too particular who I'm dealing with, because I'm only interested in cash. You'll get cash, my friend. So will all the other stockholders. Jim Acorn is an honest man. Hey, Butler, there's a cowpoke called in the ruckus at the bar. There is, eh? Uh, excuse me a minute, Mr. Acorn. Uh, before you leave, maybe you should know who you're dealing with. Here's my card and uh, my letter from the firm. Uh, uh, no need of you seeing the letter. It's a uh, kind of private correspondence. Oh, it's all right with me. Just bring the cash. That's the way I like to deal, Mr. Butler. I'm going over to the hotel now. Clean up and get out to Clem Higby's ranch before dark. Uh, you'll be open tonight. Sure. See you then. I'll be here. Boss. Hey, he forgot his letter. Shall uh, I get you? your hands off that letter? I'm the one that's going to read it. Uh, James A. Corn, Esquire. Buy every share available of White Lady Mine. We'll pay $2 a share, but only offer that as a last resort. Signed, Tyrol Investment Company, Denver. Boy, that crawling horn toad. Well, what's wrong, boss? Playing me for a sucker, eh? I'll show that dude a thing or two. I'm beating him out to Clem Higby's, buying his shares for 50 cents, and I'll collect two dollars. <laughs> they got to get up early to beat you. Yeah. yeah Look. Yeah? Trail that dude. Don't let him out of your sight. No matter what happens, keep him from seeing Clem Higby. I'll get there first and buy his stock. Yeah, but uh, somebody said Hopalong Cassidy was riding in town. Oh, you cowering coyote. I ain't afraid of no man. That includes Cassidy. He may be quick with a six-gun, but I'm quicker under my hat. Yeah, boss. All right, get you... out of here. Do as you're told. I'll handle this Cassidy like he's never been handled before. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Mystery of Three Oaks. Hopalong and his pal are riding into Three Oaks to meet a man named Acorn who wants to buy some shares of stock from Hoppy. Shares in the White Lady Gold Mine. It's been a long, hot ride under the broiling sun, and they're mighty glad to tie off back at the sheriff's office so they can rest for a spell on the shady green veranda. Oh, Topper. Ah, here's plenty of shade. 
I gotta find me some of that there shade, too, before I curl up like a overdone flapjack. <laughs> I know how you feel, California. Cool spot looks pretty inviting right now. Now, we better get our business over and get back to the bar 20. Them new hands and everything. We'll get an early start in the morning. Now, this is as fur as I'm a going. This first chair. <laughs> <sighs> Don't ask me to move out in this chair till dark. <laughs> I won't. You just rest, and I'll drop over to the cafe with the sheriff and get some food. Uh, food? Oh, uh, you mean vittles? Yeah. Oh, oh, now, Hoppy, maybe I ain't as tired as I thought. Uh, you, you... <laughs> ah, there's Sheriff Curtis now. Hello, Sheriff. Well, up along Cassidy. Howdy. And welcome to Three Oaks. What brings you? Money. Yeah. Uh, huh? Got a letter from the fellow offering to buy 5,000 shares in White Lady Mine. Oh, you too, huh? Huh? Curly Waters got the same offer on his shares. All set to sell when his, his ranch house was busted into and the shares stolen. Happened the very night Acorn arrived in town. Why, to meet him at the hotel. Well, uh, sit back and rest. I uh, just saw him all dulled and duded up, riding out of town toward the thing, Hig Clem Higby's ranch. Oh, then we'll have to wait. Uh... Hey, you saddle bump, get off this porch. Hmm? Well, why are you? You the hands want to sleep, get on from the black dude. Well, you... I'll get. Go on. Now, oh, doggone it, I'm California. I, I don't I'm... care if you're the real grandpa. <laughs> get off <laughs> Well, what's so darn funny, Hoppy? Oh, that's California, and you're inviting off of the place, Sheriff. My pal of years standing. <laughs> it is? Sure. Well, doggone it, California. <laughs> Uh, I didn't recognize you. <laughs> Consarn a fine howdy do. You stand there letting him insult me. <laughs> oh, forget it, California. There's nothing wrong with you that a plate of beans won't fix up. You know, Hobby, I'm doggone glad you come when you did. There's so much money changing hands around here, but anything's apt to happen. Well, that's all well and good, but we'll be a darn sight more help to you with a full stomach than we will a starving to death. Hmm. <laughs> The only thing that interests me, Sheriff, outside of food, is meeting this fellow who's willing to pay for a stock in a mine that's full of shale and rock. Oh, I told you to knock before you come in, Luke. I had to see you, boss. Now, don't get to jumping over the traces when I tell you what happened. Well, what happened? Well, like you told me, I trailed this dude till it got dark. Then he turned off the trail to Higby's ranch, and I, well, uh, I lost him. Well, as long as no harm's done. Oh, you got there first, huh? And I got the 10,000 shares from Higby. Good, and at 50 cents, too. Well, of course, didn't have no time to argue, so I just gave him a dollar straight. $10,000. Great, and you get $2 a share. <laughs> I'd like to see this dude's face when he finds out you outfoxed him. <laughs> uh -huh. So would I. Huh? What do you mean, boss? Uh, nothing. Keep your lips sewed up about tonight. You don't have to tell me that. Uh, look here, Luke. Let me tell you one thing. It... Uh-oh. Sounds like trouble out front. Uh, it's a sheriff with a couple of cowpokes. Yeah. Let me take a squint. Hank, it's Cassidy. So? Yeah, I got to get. You do your own entertaining. I got other plans somewhere else. <laughs> Might as well sit near the window here, Hoppy. Anywhere suits me. Yeah, just so they can get to the table with the grub. <laughs> Another stockholder in the mine runs this Black Deuce Cafe, Hoppy. Yeah? Yeah, Hank Butler. Cagey sort of fella. Doing right well with cards. Ain't nobody can take him in poker. And some of the dirtiest hands he gets. Fours. Straight flushes. Hank Butler. Hmm. Know him, Hoppy? Just trying to think. I don't remember that name. The technique sounds familiar. Well, you get to meet him. He's coming over this way. Oh, there ain't no card players here at this table. Oh, welcome to the Black Deuce Cafe, gentlemen. Uh, this here's Hopalong Cassidy and uh, California Carlson, Hank. How do you do, gentlemen? Hi. Howdy. Yeah, the grub is on the house. Order up. Well, now, that's right. Nice see you, fella. And what brings you to our fair city, Cassidy? Oh, I thought I'd sell a few shares in the White Lady Mine. Oh, good. They're particular about who you sell to? Not especially. Why? I'm buying them up. Fifty cents a share, all you can get. Oh, you're buying them too, huh? <laughs> All's fair in business, gentlemen. 
Well, I'd made an appointment with a fellow by the name of Acorn. And... That dude who rode out the Higby's ranch. He did. Well, he, he's too late. I bought 10,000 shares from Higby myself today. That leaves Mr. Acorn high and dry. Uh, I'm a businessman, Cassidy. You uh, also play a little poker, I hear. What do you mean by that? Now, now, wait a minute, Hank. No high-handed stuff here. I can handle this, Sheriff. You know, Butler, you couldn't buy one share for me at any price. And I'm riding out to Higby's to find out how you got those 10,000 shares from him. That's all there is to it, Mr. Cassidy. Butler got here first and paid me a dollar share, so I sold him. What did Acorn say about it? Oh, I guess he's kind of mad, but he only offered 50 cents. Of course, I can see where you made money on him. Uh, Hank's a nice fella. Told me to drop into the Black Deuce tonight, and everything's on the house. Did he offer to play a little poker? (laughs) I'm one fella he knows he can't beat. Why? Oh, just thinking. Um, uh, better leave the 10000 here when you go in tonight. Uh, I ain't no yearling. I've been weaned, Cassidy. Don't you worry none about me. Well, I guess we'll be going back to the hotel. Get our business over with Acorn and head for the bar 20. You'll get a better price from Butler. I did. How can Butler afford a dollar a share while well, Acorn is offering 50 cents? Each share is numbered. He'd better check them. Eh, uh, numbered? Huh? I couldn't tell you. It ain't no affair of mine. No, I guess not. Well, you ready, California? Yep. Been ready for ten minutes. I'll see you in town tonight, Cassidy. I'm sure you will. How do you mean that? You know, Higby, I'm sorry you asked that. Mm Hmm? Yeah. I don't quite know myself what I meant. Yet. Well, darn, Hoppy, you done all you could to keep that bullheaded Higby from going in town tonight. Yeah, California, how did Butler know Higby had 10,000 shares? And why would he pay a dollar a share? Yeah, well, he figured he could get it back from them. It could be that Acorn and Butler are in cahoots on this. Yeah, but it don't make sense. Butler ain't paying for something that ain't no good. Maybe when we talk to Acorn, we'll have the answer. Well, we turn on the trail right up ahead. Yeah. Hmm. What's wrong, Hoppy? Oh, Tom. Oh, boy. Uh, what, what's wrong, I asked you. I was afraid of this, California. Well, it's a man laying on his face. Yeah. And I'll give you my 5,000 shares if the man's name isn't Acorn. Now back to Hop Along Cassidy and our story, The Mystery of Three Oaks. Hopalong Cassidy and his pal California Carlson came to Three Oaks to sell 5,000 shares of the White Lady Mine to a fellow by the name of Acorn. Hoppy found that Hank Butler, owner of the Black Deuce Cafe, had been doing some buying, too. 10,000 shares at $1 a share from Clem Higby. Hoppy rode out to the Higby Ranch to find Mr. Acorn and found him dead. I felt this in my bones, Hoppy, since that acorn fella got in town. Not much you could do then, Sheriff. Yeah, and there ain't a lot I can do now until I get some kind of evidence. It seems to me you could start at that Black Deuce Cafe. Yes, yes, I was thinking the same thing. Hank Butler admitted he was out there on the Higby Ranch buying them shares. That's right, Sheriff. Yeah, and that Luke fella has disappeared hired in hair. He generally does Butler's dirty work. Yeah, if Butler didn't do his own. Well, we'll soon know. Deputy Willard knows where Luke holds up when he's in trouble. Like as not, he's got him already. And don't forget that Higby. Acorn was killed on his ranch. Yeah, but what would Higby have to gain? He already had his money from Butler. It don't make sense. Now, I don't say Higby did it. It could have been possible for Acorn to have met Butler out there and then, well, disagreed. Yes, you're right, Hoppy. That's just what happened. You're right as rain. Yeah, a butler mad as all get out because Acorn caught him in his dirty work. But we have to have some proof. Yes, I can't just drag everybody to jail. Sheriff, looks to me like a killing for greed. Well, then why wasn't Higby killed? He had 10000 Because he can be relieved of that money without a killing. Well, how do you mean, Hoppy? Poker. Butler? Yeah. Oh, I'm beginning to see what you're driving at, Hoppy. You do? What is it? Why, uh, uh, Butler, uh, that is, Acorn tried to beat Butler for the shares, and, uh, uh, well, what did happen? 
We won't be sure till the killer tells us himself. Well, that may be sooner than you think, Hoppy. Yeah, I see. I see uh, Deputy Willard bringing in that Luke fella. If we can get him to talk, it'll save a lot of time. It ain't gonna do you one bit of good, Luke, to say that you wasn't around Higby's place. You were seen riding out that way just after this acorn fella left. There ain't no law against me riding that way. There's a law against killing a man. You got any proof I killed him? Not this minute, but I'll get the proof. I weren't the only one who was out there. Butler? You don't see me with no shares, do you? Oh, you've been doing Butler's dirty work. Well, when you get more proof, look me up. Well, I won't have to look far. Or you'll be resting your bones in the cell. Come on, Luke. Get moving. You may be the law, but you'll pay for this. Yeah? Well, suppose you tell me why you was found hiding out on that old spread of yours. I wasn't hiding. I was rounding up a few strays. Yeah, well, the only thing wrong with that story is it was dark. And you ain't had a head of beef on that spread for five years. Oh, here you are, Sheriff. Yep, I got that Luke hogtied in the cell. A darn good place for him. Just came from the hotel, got my wire. Wire? Yeah, when I left the bar 20, I wired the marshal at Denver. Here's the answer. Be a lot of help. Uh, does it tell us for sure who the killer is? No, but it gives us a pretty good idea. Here's what it says. No such investment company as Tyrol. Address given as residence of Sharper called George Watts. Unable to locate. Well, doggone it. Maybe the power acorn was really Watts. No doubt about it, California. Well, I'm only interested in who done the killing. And I think I got him right back there in that cell. That's Luke. Yeah, you're forgetting about Butler? Uh, no, I ain't. You, Hoppy? I think I'll try a little of that fancy stuff on this butler. Fancy? Yeah. Tell him that Luke's been talking. Then, if he knows something, he'll open up wide as a barn door, figuring that he'll he'll only tell one side of it. Why, doggone it, Sheriff. You go doing that and we'll have another killing. You're a good lawman, Sheriff, and I don't want to be offering advice. Now, don't feel that way at all, Hoppy. Two heads is better than one. If they're not on the same man. Yeah, but... <clears throat> oh, <laughs> how do you mean, Hoppy? Well, I don't go much for this beating around the bush. I'm right to the point, and lock him up. And then I figure it out. Mm-hmm. Well, Sheriff, uh, what do you say we take a walk down to the Black Deuce Cafe? I think you'll see a mighty interesting poker game. Poker game? With a killing waiting to be solved? The Black Deuce might be a good place to solve it. Uh, yeah, and a feller can get a stack of flapjacks while he's figuring it out. <laughs> Always thinking of your stomach, aren't you, California? Well, I'm so empty, my stomach's wearing a callus on my backbone. <laughs> Let's get down to that Black Deuce pronto. Look like the bar's doing much business. No, nope. everybody's standing around that table in the bag. Must be something big. Probably ten thousand dollars. Oh, you think so? You mean that Higby's fool enough to play with that shopper? Mm, some fellers ain't got even horse hands. Let's move up there, Sheriff, where we can watch this game. Hey, not too close, Hoppy. Yeah. Looks like the game's over. Higby's just staring at Butler. And yeah, it looks like trouble. Why, you dirty poke cat, you cheated me and you know it. Why, you... One move, you... Higby, and I'll gun you down. Yeah, like you did that acorn fella, huh? Only I'm facing you. You do your killing from the That's back. That's fair enough, boys. Put up that six-gun, Butler. Yeah, you plumb cheated, Chad. That's the chance you take when you play. All right, boys, break it up. Get moving. Come on. All right, everybody, come on with your business. Hey, Tony, play some music. Any time a man beats me when I got four, he's a cheat. All cheating. right, all right, calm down. Nothing you can do now. I'll be talking to Butler, Hoppy. I'll see you in a minute. Right, Sheriff. Yeah, uh, time something was done with that sharper. You say you had four? Yeah, that's right. Four queens. You threw away one card and uh, drew one? Uh, yes, that's good poker. And he drew one card, too? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what he done. And he had a straight flush to beat you? Well, how do you know? You wasn't here. I thought I recognized that technique from somewhere. Now I remember. You do? Uh, somebody you knew before, Hoppy? Uh, yeah. Higby, 
Was Acorn angry about your selling those shares to Butler? He sure was. He twirled that big mustache of his like he was going to twist it off. He lit out of my place like he could tear Butler apart. How long after Butler left with the shares before Acorn came? Oh, not more than ten minutes. Caught up with him and Butler fought him and killed him. Higby, I'm going to get that $10,000 back from Butler. Hey, 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 they'll be shooting. No, I don't think so. I'll get it back at his own poker table. Well, Hoppy, you ain't gambling. No, California. Just beating a crook at his own game. <laughs> You ain't going to be like that yellow friend of yours and snivel if you lose. No, nope. deal the cards. Me deal? Sure. Let's make it one hand to draw. Stakes? The sky. Kings are better to open. Right. Yeah. Getting warm in here, Sheriff. Sure is. I don't know what Hoppy's up to. You can be darn sure he does. Uh, you open, Cassidy? Uh, Yeah. I'll open for ten thousand. Huh? Ten thousand? Yeah, that Cassidy is no piker. But there's many match in this fella. I'll stay. <clears throat> Sheriff, Hoppy's got four jash. I see him. How many cards you drawn, Cassidy? Um, give me two. Oh, the fool. Oh, he's throwing away fours. How many? Uh, you say two. That's right. And off the top, too. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. One, two. Now he's only got three. California. I'm taking the. Uh, I'm taking one. I'm throwing in another ten thousand, Butler. Uh, you and Cassidy, I, I can't call. And I'll tell you why you can't call, Jim Paget. Huh? Last time we met, you were Jim Paget. Same old trick, eh? You expected me to draw one card. The next card would have made you a straight flush. I don't know what you mean. Here's what I mean. I drew the six and ace of clubs. If I'd have drawn none, you'd have had one end. If I draw one, you'd have had the other end. Why, Butler, you've been cheating these folks for years. And he cheated me out of my 10000 too. And that ain't all he's done. California, let me see those shares you bought, Butler. Uh, you accusing me of something else. Let him see them, Butler. Where are they? Uh, right here in my inside coat pocket. Yeah, there. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you tell anything by him, Hoppy? Yes, I can, California. Acorn had about 5,000 shares from Curly Waters. And no shares was found on Acorn. That's right. Whoever has Curly shares... Done no killing. Uh, see anything, Hoppy? Yeah. See, Sheriff? These numbers. Mm. They're not consecutive. They're from two different owners. Well, now, that's something we can use for proof. Come on, Butler. Luke's getting lonesome for you. Just a minute, Sheriff. We forgot something. Here, Higby. Here's the $10,000 you lost to Butler. Well, thanks a lot, Hoppy. If it hadn't been for you... That makes you square with Butler. It sure does, Hoppy. I'm all square. No, Higby. You aren't square. Huh? Not till you're hanging on the end of a rope for killing Jim Acorn. Now back to Hop Along Cassidy. Hoppy, I, you know, I, I thought you was plumb loco when you said that Higby was the killer. Well, <laughs> Higby admitted it. He confessed. Yeah. And uh, when them numbers wasn't consecutive, Higby knew that he'd got them shares he stole from Curly Waters mixed with his own that he sold to, to, to Butler. Numbers? Sure. Them numbers on the shares. Oh, oh well, uh, those numbers weren't different, Sheriff. What? There weren't any share numbers. Those were the surveyor figures on the location of the mine. Why, Hoppy, you tricked him. <laughs> Acorn and Higby had planned this whole thing to unload worthless stock. They knew if the word got around that a big company was buying up the stock, Hank Butler would try to beat them to it. Uh, 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 but Higby uh, got greedy when he had the cash in his pocket. Well, uh, darned if I can figure whose side you're on, Hoppy. <laughs> Me neither. A minute ago, you was risking your neck and our money playing poker with Butler just to get Higby's 10000 back. When all along you knew he was a murderer. That's because I can't stand to see anyone deliberately cheated. And then the sight of me must be tearing your heart out. Huh? <laughs> I know what's coming. Because every minute we waste standing here jabbering is just cheating me out of more of that barbecued steer back at the bar 20. <laughs> you see, Sheriff, the only thing that's really close to California's heart is that big hungry stomach of his. <laughs> 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 Good 
Goodbye from Hopalong Cassidy. Hoppy in California will be back soon, and of course, we hope you'll be with us. You won't want to miss this next experience of theirs, so don't forget it, will you? Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The Mystery of Three Oaks was written by Howard Swart. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>